It is a bad thing when politics and religion combine. But don't believe me, just look at the history books. When the Roman Emperor said, okay, my fellow Romans, we are now all Christians. Well, of course they said, well, of course we, yes, we are. We do not wish to die at sword point. And some of them became enthusiastic Christians. Others just kept on being pagan, but they kept their, um, but they just swapped out pagan terms and pagan nouns for Christian terms and Christian nouns. Same thing happened when uh, Buddhism was introduced to Tibet. When the king said, okay, we're Buddhist, the shaman said, oh, yeah, right. You know, I got your Buddhism right here. <laughs> so they just took their bonpa terminology and bonpa philosophies and replaced the labels and terms with those from the Buddhist vocabulary. And again, that happened in China, when Buddhism, when the Buddha, when the Chinese emperor said, "Okay, Chinese folk, well, we are all Buddhists," they said, oh, "Yay!" <laughs> and some became enthusiastic Buddhists, and some were just very, very clever, and they said, "Okay, we're going to become the priests of Buddhism, but we're secretly still Taoists. So we're going to take our Taoist philosophy and our Taoist ideas." And we're just going to swap them with Buddhist terminology and Buddhist vernacular and Buddhist nomenclature. So it's no surprise that many of the Chan teachings, many of the Zen teachings, are not Buddhist teachings. Who cares? Why am I even bringing this up? Folks, there ain't nothing wrong with Taoism. There's nothing wrong with Chan, nothing wrong with Zen, nothing wrong with Hinduism. There's nothing wrong with uh, uh, bone religion, but bone religion and Confucianism and uh, Taoism are not Buddhism. So here's the deal. There are even passages in Shan teachings and in Zen teachings. There are aphorisms which say, ooh, this is a transmission apart from the scriptures. Well, of course it says that because it contradicts the teachings of Buddha. So here's the, I'm said all that to say this. You may have read five or six or maybe even seven books, but you are new, sir, or not an, oh, you, sir, or you, ma'am, are not an expert on Buddhism. There are men and women who've spent decade after decade both practicing and studying Buddhism. There are men and women who've spent numerous lifetimes studying and practicing Buddhism. So when you see a fully ordained man or woman who says something that might contradict what you've heard or what you've read or what you've understood, you, my friend, have a choice. You can choose arrogance, and you can contradict someone who would dare disagree with you. You can grab them by the pedals and rebuke them. You can mock them and denigrate them. Or you can choose a little thing as big boys, big boys like to call humility. That's right. And you can say, well, um, robed fellow, what you just said contradicts my understanding or what I've heard or what I've read. So would you please explain that to me? And so if we come to a teacher with a spirit of gentleness and sincere spiritual ambition, we can grow. If we come to a teacher with aggression and pride and competition, not so much with the growth. So, is everything that says it's Buddhist truly Buddhist? No, not so much. And that's the same thing with every religion. How are you to know? How are you to know what teachings to trust? Simple. Receive the teachings, apply the teachings, notice the results. There is no shortcut to that. Receive the teachings, apply the teachings, notice the results. Intellect is not a substitute for this. Intuition is not a substitute for this. So says me, so says Buddha. Why should we? But how do we know? Because some dusty old book tells us? No. Because when we apply Buddha's teachings, they really work well.
And that's what I want for you. I want your journey on the path to be full of joy and love and peace and ease and productivity. So by all means, join me for the July webinars. Until next we speak, may you and yours be healthy and happy. Oh, money, pardon me. Hmm.